Ace Match Mondays are back here, guys. We do have our first Ace Match and our first match up here. It is going to be Innovation versus Gumiho at TVT. Yep. Gumiho undefeated in TVT in Pro League. Innovation also an incredible TVT player. Six and one in Pro League. Yeah. So this is going to be a great Terran versus Terran. One of our best. A somewhat rare matchup still in Pro League. Let's take a look at the predictions. Whoa. Okay, only two people going for innovation. Dayhound went for innovation, as did Moonglade. And whenever Dayhound votes for someone, you got to look at it. He's doing quite well this time around. Moonglade just copied him 100%. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that guy's pretty good. I'll just do that. You know? I'm only teasing. Yeah. Well, four of us going for Gumiho. Um, both of them fantastic Terran players. Yeah, right, guys, let's jump into our ace match right now on Echo between Innovation and Gumio. Down here on the bottom right in the red for SK Telecom T1, it is Innovation. And to the top left in blue, it's Gumiho. Both of these players taking a win today for their teams. And both of them looking quite strong. Uh, Innovation getting a nice little lead in his game against Lucero with the Hellbat timing off a of two base, instantly transitioned into mech, and it's Innovation mech. That's what you're going to get. Whereas Gumio played a TVP versus Classic. And Classic going for a kind of strange gold base very early with three Stargates going Mass Oracle against Stim Marines and Widowmines. Didn't work out for him. Gumio hit a nice timing. Yeah. So, you know, this matchup was once very recently very Banshee dependent, but it's kind of slowed down a little bit. Sometimes it's all about the early aggression, how greedy you play. We're seeing most players go Raven instead of Banshee, especially if you can't get a scout off. Some players are skipping Reapers on four-player maps. Well, on this two-player map, I'd expect to see both players grab a Reaper, but, you know, we'll see how this goes. We see Gumio takes the gas first, Innovation with the barracks first. So much more likely Innovation gets a Reaper for sure, but Gumio yeah. might still do the same. Gumio strikes me as a guy who just uh, pretty much always goes for that gas first in this matchup, loves to be aggressive, loves to fight pretty early on. Uh, you know, get those factory units, the start point units out pretty quickly. The really famous TBT Gumiho once played was uh, in Busan. In 2012, he played uh, versus MMA and the GSTL <laughs> Grand Finals <laughs> versus Slayers. Uh, he, was on, he was on FXO at the time. Pull out the scroll for that one. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Gumiho showed that against Mag, even in being incredibly behind, you know, there's always a way, there's always a, an angle you can find um, to crack that sort of player. He was insanely behind, he lost a lot of SCVs, but just out uh, expanded and just out maneuvered MMA. He's the type of player who's always found holes in opponents in TBT. Nowadays, like you said, taking the more aggressive early game approach into usually cloaked banshees or just some sort of early aggressive tech play. Um, Gumiho did go on to all kill slayers in that finals, for those of you who don't remember that. I mean, this guy is an incredible player. He's got a lot of history in StarCraft II, much more than Innovation has. Uh, Innovation is much more famous recently, of course, if you're a more newer StarCraft fan. But if you've been following since the very beginning, you know that Gumiho has been around and has actually beaten the best of the best consistently many, many times, especially in Team Leagues. Yeah. Um... I think it was Zest that was given the name Dragon Slayer or Legend Killer, something like that. Yeah, Legend Killer. Legend Killer. Yeah. Um, I'd put Gumiho up there with one of those guys who isn't, like, consistently up at the top and, like, getting a ton of results and always placing, you know, top four in individual leagues or anything like that. But he always seems to come out here, especially in Pro League, and take big best of ones against fantastic players. He definitely has the skill to do it, but maybe not – the mental fortitude, or maybe he's missing just a little bit of something. You know, that little bit of extra something that makes you a very top-tier player, in my mind. Yeah. Um, just going back to your, your point, uh, it was actually Kingslayer that they called it. Ah, right. Now that I think back, uh, a bit of a Game of Thrones reference, I believe. Yeah. 
So we've got four Marines up here at the top of the ramp. Even with the Hellion here, it's going to be tough to break. Especially because he's going to walk up on move command for so long without vision, without the Reaper. Definitely not going to get in here. We'll scout, of course, with this, but not going to be able to get damage done. Yeah, but uh, again, a very nice scout going to see the uh, the tag that is coming in here. It is going to be a Raven. Uh, keep that in mind. I'm not sure Gumio is going to be able to see that just yet. Oh, oh. a bit of a spiker there. Loses his Hellion. Yeah. He won't know that it's a Raven, but this is something that you see oftentimes a player do after they've been scouted is to make the Raven instead of the Banshee if that was their plan. You can see because Gumiho doesn't know for sure, he has to add an eBay at home and get a Widow Mine just to be ready for that possible Banshee play. Yeah, generally you see those two guys, you're like, okay, Cloak Banshee's coming my way. A lot of them, I gotta prepare for it. Already making a Viking Engineering Bay, and he will be prepared for that, but. Uh you know, that does leave, I guess, a timing open for innovation. He can get out a Raven and uh, a decent amount of units here where he can kind of put on some pressure on Agumio, especially because he's preparing for Banshees, which is kind of unnecessary at this point. Yeah, three turrets, 300 minerals, that's three-fourths of a CC. You know, that's two additional barracks he could have added. Just a lot of money for nothing, essentially. The Raven's going to give a bit of extra safety, and it does add some pushing power to what innovation could be looking to do because auto turrets, of course, do a lot of damage. Um, PDD's not a bad thing, and looks so in the second factory here, we are going to be seeing a quick switch to mech. Or not you know, a switch, but a quick mech opening. He's getting the factory very early on. He's not trying to push first. He's just going to slowly ramp into that as he takes his second CC. We do have one Banshee being made after this. We're seeing this a lot out of uh, Perdos players, actually, where they get that Oracle at just a strange timing where you're not going to expect it. Get comes in there a bit later, gets two extra kills. Um, it's, it's, it's a very nice idea, especially when you already have that starport on that tech lab. You might as well. Yeah, it's it's I, that's actually a great analogy. Ooh, nice split here by Gumiho, but I don't think he's going to find much. Sacrifices one Hellion to save two. Not a bad choice. But that's a really great analogy because when you go for this Banshee harass, you know, it, it can't do this. It doesn't have the same utility as an Oracle has after it kind of gets two kills or whatever. But it can cloak to escape, whereas an Oracle can escape with speed. And it can always come back in to do extra damage, whereas... You know, the Oracle's never going to come back and do SCV damage, but it can come back and scout. So it's a lot of utility, but it's that extra surprise factor. And you don't need Vikings super early on. You already have your Raven, so it's cool to just, since you had a tech lab, might as well make a Banshee. He's not yeah. going to have Cloak, but let's see what this gets done. Especially because Gumio's like, okay, the Banshee didn't come at the regular timing. He made a Raven. I know this. So he can kind of write off in his mind as he's, you know, macro micring, going crazy, multitasking in this game of StarCraft 2. He's going to be like, okay, I don't have to expect a Banshee. Maybe he's going to be a bit out of position here. Well, because Gumio did commit to three turrets, I don't think this is going to find much at all, if anything. But what it will see, it will scout. There's no additional factories just yet. And he's going to reasonably assume that Gumio is also taking a third base. He wants to find it, but actually does find an angle here for just a second. But unfortunately, there are way too many Vikings. But he sees this. He knows it's a heavy commitment to Vikings early on for Gumio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the damage he did was not terrible. Forces a, a half pull there as well as three SCVs for just that one Banshee getting the scout also, as you mentioned. I like it. I mean, I definitely think it was worth it. So it's going to be back for both players. So far, Innovation doesn't have his armory up yet. Both players do have a third CC. Double armory for Gumiho. A later factory, but a slightly better Viking count. Actually, just now evening things up, and Innovation's going to take the lead with these next two Vikings. And you know what I really like about this is that very early Raven out of Innovation is going to help out so much in that air fight that we oftentimes see in this matchup when these two players go mech. So, you know, and Gumio going to be looking to snipe out that Raven, uh, but the Raven is going to help out a ton when it's just Viking versus Viking. It's already built almost 200 energy, as you guys can see here, 197, so... Interestingly, Gumiho landing his Vikings here. Scared that, you know, Innovation might have more than him after he scouted with that Hellion. He's like, well, I don't want him to potentially get that extra damage done here. He's also a bit timid here in that he adds a Thor. Really nervous about that air control. He's just going to relinquish the Viking count in favor of adding additional factories, getting that Thor out for safety. Yeah, we've seen this work from time to time. I'm not sure about how I like it on this map. It's going to be interesting because uh, generally on this map, it's pretty easy to defend with tanks. It's hard to get your Thors into a good position to fire onto those Vikings. Yeah. 
especially when you see attacks at the third base. The Sieging Terran can actually get on top of those refineries on the edge. And then if you don't have air control, you can't really contest. Your Thor's never going to get close enough or it's just going to get blown up. If you, like, walk it forward, it just dies instantly. You're like, oh, that's why, uh, you know, you generally don't want to go for this. It just depends on where you take the engagements. You take the engagements in the middle of the map, at the bottom of both of those ramps, or on top of the, you know, the big like, little diamond square in the middle of the map. If you can take the engagements on the high ground there with your Thors, the Vikings become much less useful, and you have to be really careful about how you control them. But Thors overall not as good. And uh oh, no response here. There's the pull, but already three SUVs go down. Yeah, and look at this kind of lining up. A decent split though from Gumio. Eventually these the Salians will go down, but getting some economic damage done. Not so bad here for innovation. Yeah. Ooh, a bit of an early send back on those SCB is almost costing him quite a few more. Six in total, not too bad for four Hellions. Uh, it does. He does see that, wow, he got blue flame and I didn't. Instead of making it himself, he's just going to let it go. It's not a required upgrade in this matchup, but it is very good to have. I mean, it just makes your Hellions better. It makes your Hellbats better. It just makes your units stronger. Good splits consistently here for Gumiho on these Hellbat or on these Widowmites, excuse me. Nice scan there, gonna force Gumiho back once again. Innovation gonna take control of the middle of the map. And it looks like he wants to do some kind of push here. His Vikings are not following, which kind of scares me, but he is actually just gonna pull back. Looks like he's scared of perhaps like a Hellbat drop. So he wants to keep his Vikings at these bases. He's got some at his third base, some at his uh, natural or in between his natural and you know the base of the bottom left in that airspace. Gumiho continues to make Thors. Going to now a third Thor and a fourth Thor. 2-2 two, two on the way. With a low siege tank count, Thors will wreck them. And Innovation is actually so heavy on Vikings, he only has five tanks to four. This Thor composition with such a small siege tank count absolutely could end up working. It could actually shut this push down pretty hard and make the Vikings yeah. look pretty useless. And you know what? Now that I'm remembering, I don't remember if it was Gumiho, but there was a game where a, a Terran in a TVT actually just went straight up. Uh, tank Thor and didn't see just tanks and just fought straight up. The Thors tanked a ton of damage. The, the tanks out of siege mode were faster. They got on top of the other tanks. They did a lot of damage outside of siege mode as well. Yeah, I absolutely know exactly the game we're talking about. I, I, well, I, I remember that game specifically. I don't remember which Terran it was who was doing that, but I do remember that game, and it does work out from time to time. I think it was TY that was in the game. But okay. uh, regardless, we do have a Hellbat drop coming in towards the natural, and Gumio sending Zunas down in the middle of the map. He's got a turret here, which is going to help a little bit, and a Thor. Well, let's see how many SCBs go down. Mm, you know, good micro here, actually. Only six, not too bad, all things considered. Oh, and look at this. The scan misses Gumio's army. That second one does, but these Hellbat drops continue to get a ton of damage done. This time, no pull. Oh, you know what? Gumio's in such a good position here, though, with this army. He's got his Thors in anti-air mode. He just needs to deal with these two Hellbats. Mm. And he can actually do a lot of damage here at this location. These Vikings need to be very careful. 18 SCVs have gone down at the base of Gumiho. He still has not cleaned them up, finally getting to work with just that one Thor. The upgrades right now are 1-1 one, one to just plus one attack, about to be 2-2 two, two to just plus one attack. So this is a good timing for Gumio to find damage here. That's a pretty huge timing. All right, let's see what these Thors can do. Tanks are already seized up on the other side of his rocks, which is going to make it very difficult to engage. Going to go for the scan here. The Thors getting a nice position here against the Vikings, forcing the innovation back. Innovation has bolstered the siege tank count since, though. You know what we were talking about? It was 5-4. Now it's 12-3. It's going to make this very difficult. Yeah, I'm not sure how much longer Gumio can stay here. He is going to try to siege up this... Uh, well, not siege up. He's going to try to siege this fourth base. Yeah, he's going to siege it without siege tanks. I don't know how much I like these Hellbats and Medvacs considering the Viking count, but he's going to break the left side currently. Vikings do land here, but this just gets totally shut down. Yeah, I don't see this working at all. Running into a siege line back there, and Gumio kind of just throwing whatever advantage he had in this game away. Not sure what the idea was behind that attack. I mean, the idea would have made sense if it hit two and a half minutes earlier before all those tanks got out. Now he's keeping his Thors in anti-air mode when there's not firing it air. Definitely want to be careful about that. This Thors going to get targeted down by Vikings. Gumiel looks like he might even type out here. GG. GG. Innovation That's takes it. the win. SK Telecom as well will get their fifth win of round number four. Looking good in that TBT was Innovation. Just a bit more experience, I think, Gumio. Maybe getting just a bit flustered. He hit that 2-2. He had some kind of timing in mind, but Innovation had him red and was completely prepared for the push. 
I feel like with this win, if I'm not mistaken, SKT will solidify their first place position going directly to the round four finals. And Gumiho, a good idea, the timing hit too late. And it may just be that those two Hellbat drops slowed him down just enough. Plus the rocks, you know, it took him a long time to get past those rocks or a lot of scenes tanks on the other side. It might have worked out, but just in contemporary standard TBT, a tank composition is going to be better than a Thor composition every time. That air control is so important. And he was just really hoping he could have gotten those Thor shots off with the, uh, you know, the unstable payload, that anti-air mode on the Thors. But the tanks just wiped him out. He found no angle. And he had a bunch of Hellbats and Vikings against like six, I mean, uh, in Medivacs against like 16 Vikings. They were never going to get in there and do anything. Yeah, Gumio taking this loss really hard. I think he knows that he made a big mistake attacking into that one. I would love to see him just take a fourth base. Maybe he thought he sustained too much economic damage at the same time. And he was like, oh, well, I just got to go for it. Come from two angles, maybe catch him on siege. But as I said before, innovation. I, he's played this map, uh, this matchup, uh, a decent number of times, Wolf, you could say. And he was completely prepared for what Gumio was throwing at him. Yeah. Well, there goes Gumio's perfect record in TBT. Yeah. As well as Classic's record in PBT, losing yep. to Gumio earlier on today. Probably some weird games today. Classic versus Gumio, definitely the strangest mass or